Well, for one, greatness is being sown into you through the word. Y'all get great teaching here. That's a great seed. That's a that's great material to start with. Then y'all get taught and trained through greatness. You get you have great examples before you. You have all the great, and then most importantly, you have the spirit of the great one available to you to live inside of you. So Praise the Lord, everybody. So, it's been a while since I presented a message like this. Um, and it's interesting because I was looking at my memories on Facebook, and it's funny because like five years ago, I was literally teaching on the same thing. So, I guess it's time for us to um, revisit these principles in a more mature, more seasoned, more developed way. Um, but it's been a while since I actually got to preach like this. So I got good news and I got great news. I got good news. So the good news is there is a lot of information in this message. The great news is I'm going to do a series, so you're going to have to wait till next week to get the second half. So we're going to, so if you were planning on going on vacation or partying next week, or you know, if you was just like already had in your mind, I'm going to go to church this week because you have to catch it on um, Facebook. And if you're not here today and y'all just, you know, catch it sometime during the week, then you know y'all can um, join us next week. But no, it's a, it's a good amount of information and I did not want to overwhelm you trying to shove it all down your groups today. I want you to be able to get enough to consume and think about and when we come back together next time you'll be able to receive the second portion. It's gonna be it's gonna be good though. It's gonna be good. Y'all y'all mess around and gonna come with notebooks, paper and Bibles if you don't already do that because it's just gonna it's gonna be good. Um, it's funny when I was preparing today, I was preparing for today. God has been speaking to me all week. I'm just going to be honest. In my prayer time, he's speaking to me all week. And um, every time I turn around, write this down. I'm going to preach on that. Write this down. I'm going to preach on that. Write this down. I'm going to preach on that. And um, so then when it was time to repair and say, okay, God, I got all of this. Which one do you want me to do? So I started to work on the one that I thought. And I was just sitting there. I was like, yeah, this ain't, it's not, it's not, it ain't, this ain't it. This ain't, it ain't, it ain't coming. And, and I'm going to tell you, like, as you grow and develop, some of you who, will speak and teach one day. Sometimes it'd be like that. It'd be like that. So I was like, all right, you gotta be humble. You gotta be humble and be willing to just say, pause, and um, hear God say, okay, God, this ain't, this ain't flowing like it should be flowing. What do you want me to do? So then I went this direction, and I was like, oh, now I got too much. I was like, all right, this is what you want me to work with. So, okay. <laughs> so it, 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 when God leads you, like when God, when you're really in the will of God, no matter what happens, man, it's just gonna flow. It's just going to flow. My, my wife made one of those mini acronyms, and um, flow is one of them, and it stands for Father Leading Our Way. Father Leading Our Way. I was about to mess that up. I was like, <laughs> somehow it was going to turn into food or something on me. <laughs> Fresh lemonade on the way. <laughs> flow, I would have messed it all up. But anyway, <laughs> but, um, Father Leading Our Way. And when, and when the Father leads our way, it flows. There's no stress, there's no struggle, there's no strain in things. But, so I just wanted to give y'all a heads up that we will, probably right when it starts getting good, I'll be like, all right, we'll come back next week, and then y'all could be upset. But anyway, to get us started, we have three scriptures that we are going to use to bring about the message that God is going to give us today and next week. Those three scriptures are Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 28, and I know that one of my wonderful satellite members is going to type these in the chat for me. Then we have, that's Mark chapter 4, verse 26 through 28. The second scripture is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 through 8. And the final scripture, just before, we got some more word, but just before, we, is Matthew 12, verse 33. Mark 4, 26 through 28, 
1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 through 8, and Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Are y'all praying with me? So let's read these scriptures. I'm going to read these three. First Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 28. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the hay, then the full kernel in the hay. Then we jump on over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 through 8. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, I have planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. So, ne so then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. And then our final focal scripture. Matthew 12, 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. The word of God is blessed. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for protecting us from dangers, seen and unseen. And we thank you, God, of the universe, creator of all things, preserver of light and light. We thank you, Alpha and Omega. We thank you, beginning and the end. We thank you, all-knowing, all-powerful, sovereign, omniscient, omnipotent one. We thank you for loving us, hallelujah, with all of our flaws and all of our insecurities and all of our imperfections, for loving us and caring for us and providing for us, even when we didn't deserve it, even when we ignored you, even when we rebelled against you, you never stopped caring and showing us your compassion, your grace, and your mercy. We just thank you, Father God. And we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, if there's anything unlike you in our lives, expose it, reveal it, and remove it, Father God. Oh, clean us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Father God. Any sin of omission, commission, or poor disposition, God, make us aware of it, Father God, and help us to overcome those things which seek to divide us and keep us estranged from you, Heavenly Father. And Lord, now we ask you to open our eyes that we can hold the wondrous things within your law. Open our ears so that we can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Open our hearts so that the seed of the word that is sown today finds good ground, takes root, grows and blossoms, and produces fruit of righteousness in our lives for your glory. Now let me decrease and you increase. Hide me behind the cross. Speak through lips of clay. Let the words of my mouth the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. These things we pray in the matchless name of our Lord, Savior, Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, y'all just hang out. Hang out. So, I'm going to start today and I'm going to share a story with you. Actually, two stories. And they just try to give us a little bit of a um, perspective to work with. So the first story is about me. And, 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 and so so this story is no secret for people who know me, right? I have made it quite known, it's well publicized, how much I hate and despise yard work. Hate it. Hate and despise Y'all, I know at least one person in here should say amen. Because they know I do amen. not like doing yard work. Exactly. One person in here has helped out with the yard work amen. because they understand how much I despise doing it. Yes. And they, they, they want to be a blessing, so they amen. can take some of that off of me. Amen, amen, amen. 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 So I, I appreciate that. But I hate doing it. I think, honestly, I was traumatized in my in my childhood. I think my parents traumatized me in that era because it was always trim the hedges. It was always cut the grass. It was always and then, and trim the hedges, cut the grass, water the grass. I don't want to water the grass. Water the grass. I'm going to let the grass grow. I'm about to cut it again. I'm going to let water it again. But it was always those types of things. Pull up the weeds. Break the leaves. There was, it was a never 
unending cycle. It was unstoppable. The yard work never ended. The foliage was always growing. Year in, year out, there was always going to be growth to contend with in our yard. I didn't have to go out there and hope it grew. It grew. <laughs> I would, I, would, I would like, I would be, I would, I would, when the spring would come, I'd be like, maybe it would, but then them, them flowers just start sprouting up. It was, it was coming. And to this day, I just be like, oh man. It's like, oh man. Because I know that growth is coming and there's nothing I could do about it, y'all. That, when we get to next week, y'all gonna run them up. But growth is coming, and yes. there's nothing you yes. can do yes. about it. But yes. hold on, we go. We got, like, we're going we're gonna to get there. We're going to get there, right? So the second story is more of an observation. And this may be me. I'm pretty sure some of you, if you get out the house so often, maybe not down in Texas. Maybe you do see it down in Texas, Linda. I don't know. But the second story is more of an observation. So sometimes when I'm driving around the city, right, I, I, I often see people, and specifically, not no shade, but I, I see Asians. I see Asian people a lot of times. And the Asian people may be any random place, on the side of the road, in a park, just walking up the street, and they'll be picking up herbs off of the ground. Uh -huh. They'll be like in the bushes and in the shrubs, and, 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 and I'm just like, it's, it's, it, it doesn't really matter. They, they don't care. They see what is growing naturally. Mm, they see what's happening naturally and occurring, and they're like, that's what I need. They know what they're looking for, and they know where to go to go get it. That's another message for Ooh, another day. Great. That's a whole other message for a whole other day. But for today's conversation is that those people are intentional, right? They, they, they practice and they see an intentional expectation based on proven principles. The Asian people who are picking herbs up on the side of the ground, they practice an intentional expectation. And it, it, they expect if they go out that something's going to be growing. They don't just go out there and hope. They go out there with their bag, they go out there with their basket, they go out there to gather what they expect because they understand that the, whatever they're looking for is going to grow and all they got to do is show up to gather what's growing without their help without the watering without them seeding it's happening right and those and those principles are that if there's seed in the ground and that if there's water it's going to grow right. and that's what we're going to try to talk about in the next two weeks what is watered is what will grow. What is watered is what will grow. Y'all, let's go. So, again, the two stories I shared with you have tons to unpack, but I want to make sure we don't lose the scriptures on the way to the exclamation point. I don't want to lose what the word is saying on the way to the exclamation point. First, let's look at that Mark chapter 4, verse 24 through 28. Let's look at that verse. So in that passage, Jesus is teaching using a parable comparing the kingdom of God to a man that scatters seed on the ground, right? And Jesus tells them the seeds and the soil produce. He tells them the seeds and the soil produce. And let me just pause to connect the stories to the text. In my yard, before the spring hits, I could go even further. Before I bought my house, the woman that lived there before me, she did a phenomenal job. She did a phenomenal job. And the first spring that we spent in the house, flowers began to bloom. And they just began to come up all around the walkway. They used to trace the walkway that goes around from the front of the house to the back of the house. They came up in the bushes in the front. And the bushes, the hedges that go up my driveway, they come up. And almost every week in the spring, leading into the summer, um, there's a different flower that blossoms. Yeah, it's beautiful if you love yard work. And it's, <laughs> it, it, it's still beautiful, but the reality is I did nothing 
I had nothing to do with that. Nevertheless, because there was seed in the ground, because there's bulbs in the ground, and the, the, the seed is doing what it does without my help. Oh, Jesus. Without my help, without my approval, without my permission, the seed does what it does. Are y'all with me here? Every year before the spring starts, I go get grass and I go get gas for my lawnmower yep. because I know it's gonna grow. I know it's gonna grow, and guess what? I can cry, I can stomp my foot, I can shake my fist, I can throw a fit, but none of that is gonna stop the principle of seed in the ground and what it does. Verse 28 in Mark chapter 4 reads, all by itself, the seed is going to grow. I hope y'all are paying attention. I'm, I, I hope y'all are catching what's happening beyond the, the physical. All by itself, the seed is going to grow. Write this down. If you're taking notes, write this down. All seed is designed and programmed to grow. All seed is designed and programmed to grow. That's what it does. That's what seeds do. When placed, watch this, when placed in the right environment, all seed is going to grow and all seed is going to produce. When placed in the right environment, because it's programmed and designed to do that. Sometimes you gotta sit back and ask yourself, what are my seeds producing? Let me slow down. Let me, let, 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 me, let me take my time from here. Ask yourself this question, y'all. Ask yourself this question. Does anyone water or cultivate weeds in the garden? Does anyone intentionally go out there and say, I'm gonna water and grow some weeds in my garden. But nevertheless, without your permission, <laughs> without your help, they grow because the seed is in an environment that produces. <laughs> because the weed seed is in the ground and the environment is designed for cultivation, the weed seed, even though you don't want it there, it's growing. Right? It's called season ground. Just like in the second story I shared with you, the Asians gathering herbs, growing freely. Those herbs didn't need permission to grow. Those seeds were somehow distributed some way, whether it was by a person, whether it was by animals, whether it was by the wind, whether it was by insects. Those seeds found themselves in an environment that could grow, and they did what they were designed and programmed to do. And the Asian people found it and say, oh look, here's something that's growing that I can use all by myself. That's our 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 and 8 scripture. Grasp the principle at work. Somebody planted a seed. Somebody planted a seed. Many of y'all may not remember this. I know Linda Reagan remembers this message I preached. While you were asleep, the enemy planted weeds in your garden. While you were asleep, the, somebody planted a seed. And that thing, because the environment, I, I, I gotta keep, I gotta keep, I gotta keep, I gotta keep drilling this point to y'all because y'all won't get inside. Because the environment was, 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 was capable of growth. I'm trying to save my good words so I get to it in my, my notes. The seeds grew. Even though there was wheat, the tares grew amongst the wheat because the soil right. could sustain growth. Y'all, 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 y'all will catch this. Y'all catch this. The seed is always going to do what it's programmed to do. The seed is going to increase. The seed is going to multiply, and it is going to produce the harvest that it's designed and programmed to produce. Every seed is programmed and designed to produce a specific harvest. Right. Now, if you've ever been on a plane before, this is the part where they say, please. Return to your seats, place your trays in the upright position, fasten your seat belts and unrecline your seats. This means the trip is about to get a little bumpy. Yeah. 
the trip is about to get a little bumpy. See, so we have dealt with the nature of the seed in general terms. An, a seed is designed and programmed to do what it does. But now we must deal with the nature of the seed in specific terms, which takes us to Matthew 12, 33. And in Matthew 12, 33 reads, either make the tree good or and his fruit good, or make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit, by his fruit. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. This is where we must keep it 100. This is where we have to stop faking the funk. We gotta keep it a bean. What does your fruit look like? What does <laughs> your fruit look like? Listen, listen. Is your fruit evil or is it edible? Is your fruit poisonous or is it palatable? Is your fruit harmful or is it healing? Is your fruit destructive or is it delivering? Is your fruit nauseating or is it nurturing? Is it nauseating or is it nutritional? Is it toxic? And y'all know my favorite one. Or is it triumphant? What does your fruit look like? What does your fruit look like? You have got to be honest about your fruit. Is your fruit poison? Is your fruit killed? If, if, is everything that you're producing in your life to a detriment to your being, your existence, and your purpose? Are you always mad? Are you always angry? Do you always want to fight? Do you, uh, is, is that your fruit? You gotta be honest with yourself about your fruit. You have to be honest with yourself about your fruit because if you're honest and you identify the fruits that are not producing the harvest that you desire, then, and, and you're honest about your fruit and you see the fruits that are producing as you desire, then you know which seeds you can water and which seeds you can cause to experience a drought. Oh, oh, no, 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 you, you, you know which seeds you can water and which seeds you can, you won't continue to water weeds. Oh, my goodness. Second Corinthians 13, verses 5 through 9, they state it like this. I'm going to read it out of the message translation. It says, test yourselves to make sure you are solid in the faith. Don't drift along taking everything for granted. Don't drift along sticking, oh, you know, that poison berry is okay. <laughs> it's a really a poison berry. But um, give yourself regular checkups. This is what the message says. You need first-hand evidence, not mere hearsay, that Jesus Christ is in you. Test it out. Test it out. You got to examine your fruit. You got to examine trials and I, 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 we, 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 we talk about trials and tribulations in turn. Don't you know a trials and tribulations? <laughs> we talk about trials and tribulations in the church. Don't you understand what a trial is? Do you understand what a trial is? A trial isn't a punishment. A trial is a testing period. When they create medical um, pharmaceuticals, they go through clinical trials right, to right. see if they do what they're supposed to do. So when you find yourself in a trial, you are being tested to see if you have grown and matured and developed in the, in the area that you need to be approved to pass, to be certified and authorized in that area. Trials don't come to break you, they come not to make you, but to prove that you've been made. <laughs> you don't trial something while you're making it. The trial happens after you've created and you've invested and you've engineered and you've designed and you've put it together. Now we say, okay, now it's time for the trial. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus. And why says you gotta test it out? But if you fail the test, this is where we miss it. If if you fail the test, do something about it. Do something, do, do something about it. Now, we, 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 we hope that we don't fail the test, but if it comes to that, guess what, I'm still in the translation. I'm still in the message translation. If it comes to that, we'd rather the test show our failures than yours. 
we'd rather know where we need to improve. We'd rather know where we need to grow. We'd rather know where we need to be strengthened so that when it really matters, we won't stumble, we won't fall, we won't break. Because it is in the trial that we find out the areas that we can improve and we go back to the work board. Yes. We go back to the workshop. Yes. We go back to the drawing board. Amen. Amen. Stop getting upset when you stumble and fall. But don't continue to stumble and fall and fail the same test. Right. Do something about it. Do something about it. Be truthful about your fruit. That way you can focus on watering the seeds that will spawn and produce success appropriately. I hate gardening. Some of it's unavoidable. But if I uproot the weeds, I ain't got to worry about them coming no more. I don't have to worry about them accidentally getting water because they have been removed completely from the equation. Yes. Con c consider this, consider this, consider this. Consider this. Things that grow in an environment, oh I'm sorry, let me, let me say it again, Paul. Consider this. <laughs> Things grow in an environment where growth is conducive. Yes. That means in a habitat where things tend to produce things will continue to produce things. I hinted at this before, now I'm gonna I'm dig into it. If weeds grow in my yard, berries will grow in my yard. They both do, by the way. Yes. Mm -hmm. If poison ivy grows in my yard, tulips will grow in my yard. They both do, by the way, because the environment is conducive for growth. Watch this. If dandelions grow in my yard, peppermint will grow in my yard because my yard is an environment that is conducive of growth. It doesn't matter what type of seed is in my yard because my yard is a place where growth happens. Anything will grow in my yard. Y'all yes. yes. gonna yes. get this point right here. The same way you have sin and affliction growing in your yard, Woo! you can have joy and peace growing in your yard and in your life because you have an environment that is conducive of growth. You've just been watering the wrong seeds. Mm. You've just been watering the wrong seeds. And you don't have to do nothing but what you continue to do except for make sure you're watering the right seeds because the berries and the weeds in my yard, I don't pick and choose which ones I water. They grow all by themselves. Right. The dandelions and the, uh, the, the, the poison ivy, they grow all by themselves. <sighs> you got things growing in your life that are a contradiction to what your goals are. <sighs> They're a contradiction of what your goals are. But the good news is you've got an environment that you can grow your goals in. Mm. Mm. Y'all yes. no, yes. no, ain't feeling that thing yes. like I'm yes. feeling that thing. Yes. You have yes. an environment that you can grow. The catch is, watch this, watch y'all get y'all y'all hear me. The catch is the environment does not select the seed. The environment doesn't select the seed. Y'all, whatever you've experienced in your life that life has seeded into you that you are now experiencing the harvest from, disappointment, frustration, trauma. The environment didn't select the seed. Life sent you that seed. Unfortunately, we allowed that seed to continue to be watered. We allowed that seed to continue to, we allowed that, when, um, when Moses sent spies into the promised land and they, uh, they returned, and I don't know if you remember the story, but they returned and they had giant grapes. And, 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 and the giant grapes were tangled with giant figs. And they were so big that they carried the branches on their shoulder. And, and y'all know that's not normal. That's not normal. But what happened is, and, and, and it wasn't on purpose. They grew like that because the, 
the land was uncultivated. They didn't, the people didn't watch over the vineyards. But, but here's the thing, it just grew anyway. It grew anyway. So because the land was uncultivated, just to give you a little bit of history, all of the livestock, the cattle, was just going to and fro as it pleased everywhere. And, you know, cattle, they're animals. So when they relieved themselves, they fertilized the land. So the land was very highly nutritional because the cows were fertilizing where everything was growing, which led to these huge fruits. But it was un but but the figs and the grapes didn't do nothing. All all it did was just be there, and it just grew and grew and grew and grew because the environment was conducive to growth. But the environment didn't choose the seed. The seed happened to be in a place of growth, at the right place, at the right time. Okay, we still in the airport now. We're going to land just for the connecting flight, because you know we got a connecting flight. That's next well, week. Like that. But we're going to land. Thank you very kindly. <laughs> but uh, but we're, going, we're going to get ready to land for the connecting flight. But, beloved, um, you have, I want you to leave today with this thought, and I want you to ponder this as we come back together next week. You have everything you need to produce. You do, because you've been having you've been having some weeds and some poison ivy, some poison sumac. You didn't have some some so everything you don't want in your garden growing has been growing, and it's annoying, it's frustrating, it's irritating. It get on your nerves. That's N E R B E as nerves. It gets on your nerves. I know. It, no, okay, maybe it don't, but it gets on mine. But the good news is, you have everything you need to produce. The problem is you have been watering the wrong seeds. The problem is you've been watering the wrong seeds. You want joy, but you've been watering sorrow. You want peace, but you've been watering chaos. You want healing, but you keep watering sickness. Let me make it, let me make it plain. What you invest in is what you're watering. What you invest in is what you're watering, right? Where do you spend your time your talk, your talent, Come on. and your treasure. Because those places are the places your water is going. Right. Though if all you talk about is how bad you got it and how hard you got it and how rough you got it, guess what? You're watering the wrong seeds. But it's going to grow because the environment is conducive to grow. If you're focused on your problems, your disappointments, and your frustrations, and you're not focused on your hope, and your faith, and your deliverance, then you're watering the wrong seeds. If you're spending your money in coping mechanisms to make you to forget, to numb the pain, you're watering the wrong seeds. Wherever you spend your time, your talk, your talent, and your treasure, those places are the places your water is going. Stop wasting, just, 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 just for this week, until we get back next week, stop wasting your water on worry. <laughs> stop wasting your water on worry, but rather pour your pitcher into places of purpose. Okay? Just stop wasting your water on worry and pour your pitcher into places of purpose. Pour your pitcher into your family. Pour your pitcher into your relationship with the Father. Pour your water. Invest in those. And, and, and so, so next week, we're going to discuss, watch this, how to redirect your rain. <laughs> next week, we're going to talk about how to redirect your rain so your water stops landing and causing the wrong seeds to grow. How to redirect your rain so the weeds will wither and godliness will grow in your garden. So we're going to pause right there for today. And next week, I hope you guys come prepared to get these four points, hallelujah, on how to water, hallelujah, the seeds of your success. Amen? Amen. 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 Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to talk to your children, Father God. And I believe, Father God, that our harvest is changing. Yes. I believe, hallelujah, that for all of those seeds of sin, that there is a crop failure about to happen, hallelujah. And there is a harvest of holiness. 
uh, there is a, a, a crop of covenant, hallelujah. There is a produce, hallelujah, of productivity and promise coming to your kingdom, Father God. And I just thank you for this word. I thank you for what's going to happen because of the application of what we are being given today. God, we continue to thank you for equipping us. We continue to thank you for being patient with us. And most importantly, God, we continue to thank you for your love that you extended to us. And now in this season, we thank you because you are giving us the tools, the techniques, and the tactics to triumph over every trial and tribulation that we face today. God, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.